A reading of Agrippa. So we're reading Agrippa, Book 1, Chapter 6, The Three Books of Occult Philosophy. All right. And today we're talking about the, the wonderful natures of water, air, and winds. So this is the, the beginning part of Agrippa's Three Books of Occult Philosophy, where he bake, breaks down the three elements. All right. So here we go. And I provide a link um, where if you want to buy a copy, a monetized link. Um, all right. So chapter six of the wonderful natures of water, air, and winds. The other two elements, that is water and air, are not less efficacious than the former. Neither is nature wanting to work wonderful things in them. There is so great a necessity of water that without it no living thing can live. No herb, no plant whatsoever, without the moistening of water, can branch forth. In it is the seminary virtue of all things, especially of animals, whose seed is manifestly waterish. And again, this was uh, published in 1531, so this is from the 16th century. <laughs> Many people consider this like, you know, one of the most important books in the history of, of magic. Um, the three books of occult philosophy published in the 16th century. Anyways, back to this. Um, in it, in it, in water, is the seminary virtue of all things, especially of animals, whose seed is manifestly waterish. The seeds also of trees and plants, although they are earthy, must notwithstanding of necessity be rotted in water. Before they can be fruitful, whether they be imbibed with the moisture of the earth, or with dew, or rain, or any other water that is on purpose put to them. For Moses writes that only earth and water bring forth a living soul. But he ascribes a twofold production of things in water that is, of things swimming in the waters, and of things flying in the air above the earth, and that those, repro those productions that are made in and upon the earth are partly attributed to the very water, and the same scripture testifies where it said that the plants and the herbs did not grow, because God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Such is the efficacy of this element of water that spiritual regeneration cannot be done without it, as Christ himself testifies to Nicodemus. Very great also is the virtue in it, and the religious worship of God, in expiations and purifications. Yea, the necessity of it is no less than that of fire. Infinite are the benefits, and diverse are the uses thereof, as being that by nature of which all things subsist are generated, nourished, and increased. Thence it was that Thale Thales of Miletus and Hesiod concluded that water was the beginning of all things, and said it was the first of all the elements, and the most potent, and that because it hath the mastery over all the rest, for as Pliny said, water swallow up, Water swallow up the earth, extinguish flames, ascend on high, and by the stretching forth of the clouds challenge the heavens for the for their own. The same falling become the cause of all things that grow in the earth. Very many are the wonders that are done by waters, according to the writings of Pliny, Solanus, and many others, many other historians. Of the wonderful virtue whereof Ovid also makes mention in these verses. Horned Hammond's water at high noon are cold, hot at sunrise and setting sun. Wood put in bubbling athemus is fired. The wood then farthest from the sun retired. Circonian streams congeal his guts to stone. That thereof drinks and what therein is thrown. Crathes and Sybaris from the mountains rolled, color the hair like amber or pure gold. Some fountains of a more prodigious kind not only change the body, but the mind. Who hath not heard of obscene Salmachus, 
of the Ethiopian lake, for who of this, but only taste their wits no longer keep, or forthwith fall into a deadly sleep, who, who at clitorious fountain thirst remove, loath wine and abstinent mere water love, with streams opposed to these lincitous flows, they reel as drunk who drink too much of those. A lake in fair Arcadia stands, of old called Phineas, suspected as twofold. Fear and forbear to drink thereof by night, by night unwholesome, wholesome by daylight. Josephus also makes relation of the wonderful nature of certain river, of a certain river between Archaea and Raphania cities of, of Syria, which runs with a full channel all the Sabbath day, and then on a sudden ceases, as if the spring were stopped, and all the six days you may pass over it dry shod, but again on the seventh day, no man knowing the reason of it, the waters return again in abundance as before, whereof the inhabitants thereabout called it the Sabbath day river, because of the seventh day, which was holy to the Jews. The gospel also testifies to a sheep pool, and to which whosoever stepped first, after the water was troubled by the angel, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. The same virtue and efficacy we read was in a spring of the Jonian nymphs, which was in the territories belonging to the town of Ellis at the village called Heraclea, near the river Catheron, which whosoever stepped into being diseased came forth whole and cured of all his diseases. Pausanias also reports that in Lycius, a mountain of Arcadia, there was a spring called Agria, to which, as often as the dryness of the region threatened the destruction of fruits, Jupiter's priest of Lycius went and after the offering of sacrifices, devoutly praying to the waters of the spring, holding a bough, holding a bow of an, old, of an oak in his hand, put it down to the bottom of the hallowed spring, then the waters being troubled, a vapor ascending from thence into the air, was blown into the clouds, with which being joined together, the whole heaven was overspread, which being a little after dissolved into rain, watered all the country most wholesomely. Moreover, Rufus, a physician of Ephesus, be, besides many other authors, wrote strange things concerning the wonders of water, which, for aught I know, are found in no other author. It remains that I speak of the air. This is a vital spirit, passing through all beings, giving life and subsistence to all things, binding, moving, and filling all things. Hence it is that the Hebrew doctors reckoned it not amongst the elements, but count it as a medium or glue. It's talking about air, the element of air. Count it as a medium or glue, joining things together, and as the resounding spirit of the world's instrument. So I'm going to read that again. Now it's talking about the element of air. It remains that I speak of the air, this is a vital spirit, passing through all beings, giving life and subsistence to all things, binding, moving, and filling all things. Hence it is that the Hebrew doctors reckoned it among, not amongst the elements, but counted as a medium or glue, joining things together, and as the resounding spirit of the world's instrument. It immediately receives into itself the influences of all celestial bodies, and then it communicates them to the other elements, <clears throat> as also to all mixed bodies. <clears throat> also it receives into itself, as it were, a divine looking-glass, the species of all things, as well natural as artificial, as also of all manner of speeches, and retain them, and carrying them with it, and entering into the bodies of men, and other animals, through their pores, makes an impression upon them, as well when they sleep as when they be awake, and affords matter for diverse strange dreams and divinations. <clears throat> Hence they say it is, that a man passing by a place where a man was slain, or the carcass newly hid, is moved with fear and dread, 
because the air in that place being full of the dreadful species of manslaughter it's talking about like energies in the air or vibrations and it's pretty interesting hence they say it is that a man passing by a place where a man was slain or the carcass newly hid is moved with fear and dread because the air in that place being full of the dreadful species of manslaughter doth being breathed in move and trouble the spirit of the man with the like species whence it is that becomes to be be afraid for everything that makes a sudden impression astonishes nature whence it is that many philosophers were of opinion that air is the cause of streams and of many other impressions of the mind through the prolonging of images or similitude or species which are fallen from things and speeches multiplied in every air until they come to the senses and then to the fantasy and soul um, and soul of him that receives them be it, which being freed from cares and no way hindered expecting to meet such kind of species is informed by them for the species of things although of their own proper nature they are carried to the senses of men and other animals in general may notwithstanding get some impression from the heaven whilst they be in the air but reason of which together with the aptness and disposition of him that receives them they may be carried to the sense of one rather than another and hence it is possible naturally and far from all manner of superstition no other spirit coming between that a man should be able in a very time to signify his mind unto another man so now he's talking about like telepathy again passing through the air as a, a medium that binds things together and hence it is possible naturally and far from all manner of superstition no other spirit coming between that a man should be able in a very time to signify his mind unto another man abiding at a very long and unknown distance from him although he cannot precisely give an estimate of the time when it is yet of necessity it must be within twenty-four hours and i myself know how to do it and have often done it the same also in time past did the abbot Tritemius? Now he's talking about the way of communicating that Tritemius had. But know and do. Also, when certain appearances, not only spiritual, but also natural, do flow forth from things, that is to say, by a certain kind of flowing forth of bodies from bodies, and do gather strength in the air, they offer and show themselves to us as well through light as motion, as well to the side as to the other senses and sometimes work wonderful things upon us as plotinus proves and teaches and we see how by the south wind the air is condensed into thin clouds and which as in a looking-glass are reflected representations at a great distance of castles mountains horses and men and other things which when the clouds are gone presently vanish and aristotle in his meteors shows that a rainbow is conceived in a cloud of the air as in a looking-glass and albertus said that the effigies of bodies may by the strength of nature in a moist air be easily represented in the same manner <clears throat> as the representations of things of things are in things and aristotle tells of, of a man to whom it happened by reason of the weakness of his sight that the air that was near to him became as it were a looking-glass to him and the optic beam did reflect back upon itself upon himself and could not penetrate the air so that whithersoever he went he thought he saw his own image that his face toward him go before him in like manner by the art artificialness of some certain looking-glasses may be produced at a distance in the air beside the looking-glasses what images we please which when ignorant men see they think they see the appearances of spirits or souls when indeed they are nothing else but semblances kin to themselves and without life and it is well known if in a dark place where things where there is no light but by the coming in of a beam of the sun somewhere through a little hole a white paper or plain looking-glass be set up against that light that there may be seen upon them whatsoever things are done without being shined upon by the sun 
And there is another slight or trick, yet more wonderful. If any one shall take images artificially painted or written letters, and in a clear night set them against the beams of the full moon, whose resemblances being multiplied in the air, and caught upward, and reflected back together with the beams of the moon, any other man that is privy to the thing, at a long distance, sees, reads, and knows them in the very compass and circle of the moon, which art of declaring secrets is indeed very profitable for towns and cities that are besieged, being a thing which Pythagoras long since did often do, and which is not unknown to some in these days, I will not accept myself. And all these, and many more, and greater than these, are grounded in the very nature of air, and have their reasons and causes declared in mathematics and optics, and as these resemblances are reflected back to the sight, so also sometimes to the hearing as is manifest in the reflect in the echo but there are many more secret arts than these and which hereby if any one may at very remote distance hear and understand that what another speaks or whispers softly there are also from the early element winds for they are nothing else but air moved and stirred up of these there are four that are principal the four winds blowing from the four corners of the heaven that is notus from the south boreas from the north zaphire or zaphyrus from the west urus from the east which pontanus comprehending in these verses said cold boreas from the top of limpus blows and from the bottom cloudy notus flows from setting phoebus fruitful zephyrus flies and barren urus from the sun's uprise <clears throat> notice is the southern wind cloudy moist warm and sickly which hieronymus calls the butler of the rains ovid describes it thus out flies south wind with dropping wings who shrouds his fearful aspect in the pitchy clouds his white hair streams, his beard big sw swollen with showers. Miss bid his brows, rain from his bosom pours. But Boreas uh, is contrary to notice, and is the northern wind, fierce and roaring, and discussing clouds makes the air serene, and binds the water with frost. Him doth Ovid thus bring in speaking of himself, force me befits with this thick cloud i drive toss the blue billows knotty oaks up river congeal soft snow and beat the earth with hail when i my brethren in the air assail for that our field we meet with such a shock that thundering skies with our encounters rock and cloud-struck lightning flashes from on high when through the crannies of earth i fly and force her in her hollow caves i make the ghost to tremble and the ground to quake and zaphyrus which is the western wind is most soft blowing from the west with a pleasant gale it is cold and moist removing the effects of winter bringing forth branches and flowers to this urus is contrary which is the eastern wind and is called apeliotes it is waterish cloudy and ravenous of these two ovid sings thus to Perses and Sabaei flies, whose games perfume the blushing morns uprise, next to the evening and the coast that glows, with setting Phoebus flowery Zaphyrus blows, and Scythia horrid Boreas holds his reign, beneath Boites and the frozen wane, the land to his oppose doth Oster sleep, with fruitful showers and clouds which ever weep. And that is um, the three books of occult philosophy, book one, chapter six. And, um, and so we're just doing these readings from Agrippa. Agrippa's three books of occult philosophy. Agrippa's three books of occult philosophy um, published in 1531 
the first two books and all three books together published in 1533. Um, so the, or I'm sorry, book one in 1531, all three books in 1533. So very important work, pretty much any, most <laughs> occultists, um, at least in Europe, um, from the 1500s on to today. Well, I don't know about today. Uh, up until the 19th century. Although people are getting back into it. This is a reading of Agrippa. So, um, and then next time, we're going to start working through this again. So this is where it talks about the four elements. I just want to add here that, um, yeah, I think that's enough. Um, I don't really need the commentary here. Once we get deeper into more specifics, um, then I'll start doing commentary and, and breaking it down. But right now we're just talking about the elements. This is the beginning portion. So we're going to keep working through Agrippa. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Um, and um, I will see y'all in the next video. Hope everyone's having a great day, y'all.